It's such a typical thing. Once you receive your well-deserved offer from a tech company, you start to worry again if you can even live up to the expectations. And this is exactly what this video is about. I'm gonna share four different habits which I believe are essential to be successful as a software engineer within any fan company. So let's get going. First thing you should get really good at is being able to understand a problem in depth. And one essential part of this is to understand who will use the thing you create. You should ask a lot of questions because problems normally being assigned to you are not as clearly defined as they could be. So ask, what are we really trying to achieve here? And who are the users of the system? So that could be another service calling whatever you built or end users, which do use your UI and try to achieve a business goal. This is important because it allows you to make a judgment call on technical problems, if they are real and relevant to what you built or no. Most importantly, never make assumptions only about those questions. You need to double check and verify. Once you have understood the problem in depth, it's time to start implementing. And a successful implementation is a completed one. To get there, the key is focus, and that means to resist a lot of temptations. Don't use all the shiny technologies which are out there. There's more and more technologies coming out, and don't try to use them all, make deliberate decisions. Don't try to fix all the problems in the code at once. Document bugs you haven't seen before, but move on with your actual task. If you come across an implementation in code which works fine, but you think you are capable of implementing in a way smarter way, resist this urge. This is a lot of things you shouldn't do. The one thing you should do and make it your highest goal is to get things done. Within a couple of weeks after you have been assigned to a new project or just a new task, you are the local expert on the problem behind it. For example, the recently introduced backend architecture. Now you are supposed to implement a new feature and you find out that actually it's not scaling as well as it was supposed to do. Whatever happened, it's your task to clearly communicate the problem to your manager or your tech lead. First thing is that you communicate at all. If you're not raising a flag that something goes wrong or has gone wrong, that's a big problem. And this is because you're part of a bigger thing. So your managers need to know what's going on as soon as possible. And this is important because they are reporting to their managers and there's also customers probably waiting for feature to be shipped. Your managers also might be able to actually help you because they have seen tons of problems and maybe they have a good advice on how to fix these things faster than you would expect them to fix or find out yourself. From what I see, people who progress in their careers this is one skill they have all in common. They're all able to extract only the crucial details and present them easy to understand to the right people. Next, we talk about not creating problems. That's a very good habit and people really can appreciate it. Just like yourself, your manager and your tech lead wants to get things done. And for them, this means that they do have all their individual contributors to be as effective and efficient as possible. It's fantastic to be the expert on a certain technology and what comes with it is a strong opinion on how things should be done. But you need to be careful to make your strong opinion and expertise not become a problem for your managers. If you would say something like, oh no, I won't work on the system because it's Java and I'm really not a Java guy. That is creating a problem for your manager. And here's why. It's really lacking context. So you haven't stated why you wouldn't work on this system. Well, it's Java, it's not really exactly helpful to, for your manager to find out what to do about this flag you, you just raised. So always provide context. And that means in this case, you say something like, hey, I don't want to work on this system because I'm not very experienced with Java. That means it's gonna take a long time for me to get productive. That's gonna hurt our schedule. Hard to believe, isn't it? But this is really the four things I consider most critical to be successful as a software engineer within a fan company. If you like this kind of content, just hit the subscribe button and you won't miss any of my upcoming videos.